Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Camera Tuesday, we're going to talk about Boom Operator. Unfortunately, nothing has to do with Boom, which is very disappointing, but it has to do with sound. So sound is one of those weird things that it's like basically half of the movie, but people only notice it when it's off. For example, example, let's say you are making a tea and you put sugar into it. And if you do it just right, nobody will ever talk about it. But if you put too little air, dude, it does not have enough sugar. Put too much air, it has too much sugar. It's like, it's one of those things where it's just like, just right, nobody gives a damn about it. But if it's wrong, everybody gives a damn about it. It's almost like how uh, we have IT sector in offices, where it's like, if everything works, why we are paying you? If it does not work, why we are paying you? So it has to be done with responsibility. And ironically, in terms of visual fidelity, we were behind schedule. But in terms of audio fidelity, holy damn, we had good quality uh, audio long ago. Like very, very, very long ago, we figured out how to make good quality audio. I mean like truly good quality audio. So somebody has to be responsible for that. And we have learned it the hard way that Dash shall have quality audio. So boom operator is the one that is responsible for this. Now be mindful, we have a lot of post-processing steps after you record the sound to actually going to the customer. But you have to understand, everything in life has the same rule. Garbage in equals garbage out. Meaning these puppy, these people, they cannot take, uh, you know, you give them garbage and they're like, voila, gold. That's not how it works. You have to give them gold, then they can make it into platinum. So you have to understand this very clearly. If your source sucks, nothing can be done. So there has to be someone in a film crew that is like, this is my job, I got this. So who is that? I got this. Boom operator is the guy who got this. Now, depending on the size of the crew that you are talking about, depending on the scale of the project, you could have one individual, I got this. Uh, it would generally be in a small, low budget documentaries or uh, basically corporate shoots. And uh, for example, you have uh, basically interviews and all that jazz. You could just have one individual. But when you're talking about some big movie and God help you, if you have multiple people who are talking and you have to record all their voices. Yeah, at that point in time, you can easily, easily have a whole crew. At that point in time, you may even have a, a different people who are handling the mics and a different people who are handling the basically recording of those files. So you could have sound recordist at that point in the time. So generally, most of the time when you go to a film set, film crew, if normal budget is used, uh, there is a range of single operator to like a multi crew. You will find somewhere in between, like generally there will be more than one individual responsible. So that's how it works. And this is the primary reason. If I give you, uh, let's say, a 2K projector, which is good enough, not bad, not great, but like good. But I give you the most amazing audio experience and another theater that is like 4K, super awesome, laser projection, but blah kind of audio, not bad, but blah. I can guarantee you most people will choose the 2K one. Sound is one of those things that you have to quote unquote, feel it. So we have learned it the hard way that sound matters. So let's start with the boom. Unfortunately, nothing to actually go boom, but uh, it's just a big ass boom story. Now, it's the sound source. Whenever you are seeing anything, most of the time, and most, some of you may know this uh, meme. Yes, there is a red half pant meme, uh, but it's a meme. So boom is the main source of audio. Now you might like, what if people record the audio after the fact? It can be done, it has been done, but generally it's not preferred. It's one of those things that if you are standing and walking, the audio that you're gonna get out of your mouth, it's completely different if you're sitting in a sound booth. It's there, it's used, but nowadays it's more of overlaying and correcting any errors, or if like there is some noise and all that. It generally, it's not preferred. Like you always want a quality source and you may want to like, you know, chime in or edit or things of this nature, but you never want to be like, okay, I will record everything in sound booth. It will never ever work. It's one of those things we have learned it the hard way. To give you a, a context like how serious this is, now it is because again, uh, digital recording is so cheap that they will have a scene, they will take action, everything is done. But after that sound guy, basically generally the boom operator could just go to the uh, basically actor, say, please repeat your line. He'll just take capture a tear and the mic would be as close as possible. That take, because again, he's generally in the makeup, everything is there, the emotions are raw. So he just speaks, everything matches up. And those are what we call wild takes. And benefit of that is using that audio, you know what an optimum audio should sound like. That should help you the person is like, no, 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 this person is talking with that sort of hiss. And this person is talking with that sort of sharpness and that allows them to not over post correct. So you need that reference material. So quality shotgun microphones are used to capture subdued ambient. This is the reason why these are preferred over lavalier. Are lavalier used? Absolutely. They are always as a fail safe, always used. But shotgun, the reason is that shotgun is a normal microphone with an interference tube in front of it. So that's the reason why it's so long. That 
thing that is actually converting uh, sound wave into electrical impulse that could be anything that does not matter too much but the interference tube that gives it is the narrow view the longer the tube the narrower the way basically so you can have like these things are idiotically expensive you can get that now because they are doing it as best they can do they get very clean audio from far away meaning you can be like few foot away and it will be very clean that's awesome but here's the physics does not work in that clean steps in real life so you always will capture a little bit of ambient now that's a desirable thing why it's a desirable thing because we have this puppy is very high resolution like ironically high resolution these things are so if ambient is missing and you add ambient in post people will feel it they won't be able to put their finger on it it's like no i think this is what's missing but the people will feel it and that's why generally these are preferred you always want that ambient you can suppress it down you can like hey hi about these sort of frequency is there it gives that liveliness you know you never talk to someone without those noises there is always the background noise but our ears are awesome at toning it down but if your ears itself gets clean audio the ears is like what the hell is happening it feels fake so that whenever people talk about really the richness that's what they are talking about it's like 80% main audio and 20% of things so it's done lavalier is always generally used but again if you have no other choice then only lavaliers are used if you have the budget these puppies are not cheap and the operators are expensive so lavaliers are used again like this now it they must not appear in the frame their biggest hassle is to get this mic as close to the actor's mouth talent's mouth without actually getting into the frame that's the whole deal about them that's why this is not something oh it's just a holding a rod no they have to be completely aware and god help you if they have to walk with the camera that's a very hell of a hassle thing and that's why many time cameraman will have a known boom operator because they can work together they're like bro boom operator is like hey what's the mm camera guy will be like 50 mm so boom operator because they have worked with each other they will figure it out okay i have to put in this much angle so it's one of those things again okay, you can watch it and all that but be mindful you have to think in three dimensional so you have to like okay and all that and they also have to be very mindful of shadows and reflection what does that mean the think of this scene where is the light source is this side light is coming from this side but the boom operator is also lit from this side why so his shadow does not form on any part of the scene this is very critically thought if you have uh, life uh, basically lights that are on top generally they will have boom from below for that reason exactly you do not want to cast shadows that will be seen reflections those are also another hassle things now you can you can find like whole youtube videos where it's like compilation of where you can see the boom operator in big budget movies but generally it should not happen so these people's job is rudimentally difficult like it's it requires physical dexterity and does require a very serious awareness they, if they are coming in the shot it's their fault be mindful it's it's not like oh nobody told me no no it's his job to make sure that he does not interfere into scene his job is to figure out hey, where is the light where is the shadow dp should not supposed to come to him and is like bro your shadow is falling on the actor if they did that one or two time is hey people low budget people one or two time that's good but if you really want to graduate to pro level like once in a while oops or like you missed a mirror or something like that that's acceptable the people are people at the other end but it's not something that you should be told regularly it's like hey oops i missed it or something like that that's the whole point that's why you're getting paid there then we come to the sound bag where does the audio go audio goes into a sound bag something like this now sound bag is the mobile place these are inherently designed to be man man portable so to say uh, they can use carts but generally not uh, recommended and be mindful carts are generally pre blocked for large crew if you are not dealing with large crew those are overkill so to say so small bags are used and these bags are custom built for audio equipment same way we have custom bag ecosystem built for camera equipments same is here these bags are designed in such a way where like they have been st quote and quote standardized for so long that they are the reason why audio equipments have the certain feel to it for example having everything in one angle of it you will think like if you are making a project or any box you will think like i am going to put largest amount of controls inputs on top but no it's designed to go into bag so that's why everything is in this plane so it can slot into the bag without too much issue why the heck all the audio system is not on the back which it will be if it was designed for a desktop operation it's not it's designed for bag operation so all the audio cables input and outputs are always on the side again they will put something in the back if they are size constraint generally batteries are put there because those are not something that you're going to run out very quickly so 
they do have those sort of thing but it's whole ecosystem is i meaning the pro level uh, lavalier microphone receiver audio receivers uh, audio recorders battery packs all that is built for audio system is designed such a way that everything is in tops you can see that like antenna is exactly in the same way where you have lcd it's designed that way it's designed so it can work perfectly well with the audio recorder bag so this is the whole critical aspect everything is top mounted and for easy access everything is just like and again this is just three knobs this barely looks like he has four recorders but sometimes it can get a bit excessive but it has to be done it has to be done if you need this you need this and they do require body harness because it's one of those things that if you're not very uh, frequent individual to a gym you may think like lifting a big weight is the you know hard part it's not making sure you're lifting it continuously is the hard part for example these bags they are one kilo five kilos it's not too bad i even i can lift it but here's the i cannot do this for my whole shoot day my body is like bro let's go to hospital so that's the whole critical aspect this had to be as light as possible so the person carrying it does not injure themselves and that's why harnesses are also integral part of this like day one like people are like who are serious about their health who want to do this for long term they will invest in harness and all the quality back from quality manufacturer will have a good design so it can integrate with harness very well it's one of those things that you do not think about it when you're young but it's it becomes important so sound bag is where everything goes where the heck audio is going where the heck audio is processed this is the sound bag this is where everything is happening on a small scale sometimes you may find carts then we come to the core of everything the soul of whole job the soul of whole job is recorder recorder is the one that is converting the electrical impulses into digital signal that is completely safe completely stored that you can give to audio mixing department afterwards so that's the soul of whole operation and they must have time code injection this is the whole reason time code was even built to make sure uh, audio and video are married together properly so time code is one of those things that it has to have any like what's the easiest way to uh, find a difference between a cheap level and a pro level tool pro level always has audio in, uh, you know time code input always and most of the time they will have dedicated system not like oh you can inject a time code using audio channel no no it will have a dedicated metadata layer for audio code the, and that's the reason why most of the mirrorless cameras are not qualified for netflix even though same bit depth same resolution same uh, frame rate and same uh, basically mbps per second all things match to pro levels but pro level just have that uh, basically time code proper time code input you need that if you if you need long shoots or you have to sync multiple system you need that it's not optional you have to have it the and cameras also can go to one step further they can go to gen lock where if they are syncing multiple camera it becomes important so time code injection is a must like you have to have time code and must have multiple or uh, track recording record what what does that mean multi recording multi recording means each microphone input is getting its own channel so you can have four channel five channel 15 channels eight channels whatever have you all of those will be recorded on their separate system so a audio mixer at the final stage for example let's say you are shooting a scene where it's a giant conference table ring conference table and every person has a mic and they are speaking all that audio has to be recorded and isolated in such a way that they can be manipulated in post production because every individual has a different signature some people talk quietly some people talk i am very loud some people are, i have very boomy voice it's one of those things and it requires to be completely unmixed they need isolated tracks so they can be tampered with it in post production it's a complete compulsory requirement so if you buy a cheap zoom h1n you will find hey it just mixes down everything to basically stereo that's why it's not a true multi-channel recorder if you try to record four channels into it yeah it won't eight channel ten channel is not gonna be. like you need that this is why like these have so many knobs they can digest quote unquote so many inputs for that reason now what is the most important part in these things it's a to d as in soul of the sound itself because i have clarified we have understood sound surprisingly long ago we have converted sound into digital impulses surprisingly long ago but where we have messed up is not even messed up it's like we know how it works but it's very difficult it's taking that audio impulse uh, as in like that electrical voltages or whatever you have capacitance change whatever have you that analog signal into digital signal that conversion is surprisingly difficult like surprisingly difficult to do it well can we do it absolutely that's what your bluetooth microphone works that's how it is. but to do it good enough where it looks awesome in a theater speaker system yeah no just no not even this puppy 
So it's one of those things that analog to digital converter circuitry is the most expensive part. So what's the difference between Zoom and uh, Mic Pre 2? It's the analog to digital converter. Why, why there are like recorders like this could be 5,000, this could be uh, 50,000, there could be 500,000 and people are still buying that 500,000. But even though you may find, hey dude, feature wise, like literally feature by feature, all of things are same. Where the heck that money is going? That money is generally is going to analog to digital converter. And when people talk about now, like it has a signature, a feel, where is that feel? Signature is coming from analog to digital converter. That's the soul of audio itself. And because it's a half between analog regime and digital regime, they are very finicky devices. So that's what you are paying for. Whenever you hear about like people talking about, oh, this audio recorder is awesome and you're like, dude, this is too expensive. Generally, it may have an audio to uh, analog to digital converter that is tangibly good or it has a signature that person is likes. So it's one of those things. Now, thankfully, because of the recent development of 32-bit float audio, we no longer have the issue of levels. Back in the days of 24-bit, we always had to worry about level because again, you cannot recover it. Like see, if you try to recover 24-bit, it's lost. And the reason why 24-bit always ends up clipping is that the way analog to digital converter works, on paper, on mathematics, 24-bit is like long enough, like it has enough latitude. But because of the conversion does not work that well, it's designed in such a way that focuses all of the bits, quote unquote, onto the loud sounds. Now, benefit, if you are leveling it correctly, it's awesome. The sound quality is truly good. Problem is, to get sound quality truly good, you have to be recording at like, uh, you know, as close to minus 5 dB or minus 10 dB or something like that. Basically, you're close. You're close to clipping at that point in time. But problem is, you are close to clipping through the timeline. You could clip and people do clip. That's an issue. Back in the days, people used to have analog limiter circuits. Now, this circuit inherently worked on an in electric domain. So if the electrical impulse reached a point where it started to, it will overwhelm the analog to digital converter, the electrical circuit took over and it's like, bro, calm down. So it never clipped and it happened on all analog regime. The sound quality was maintained somewhat, but at least it did not clip. Now somebody figured it out, what if we had two analog to digital converters? One super sensitive, designed for low volumes. One su uh, super dull, it's like, I don't care, man, like super strong. But it's super awesome at if you're yelling. So I have two audio to uh, digital converters, and they're both tuned for different things. One tuned for uh, basically mild volumes, one tuned for high volumes. Everything works fine, but here's the deal. How do you deal with that? You get all the data married together in one file, that is 32-bit float audio. And you can recover whatever the hell you want in 32-bit audio. Nowadays, you can buy recorders that have 32-bit, connect them to your computer, and record in such a way that you can yell as long as you want, you can be as quiet as you want, the recorder itself will port the value from 32-bit to 24-bit. And sometimes, uh, even softwares can do that, real-time now. So you can tune it in such a way that always be like, let's say you want your uh, live streaming, for example, to be a bit hot in terms of signal because you know like people don't have good headphones. So you'll be like, hey, uh, try to maintain minus 5 dB. So 32-bit audio comes in, it has everything, and the software will be like, okay, I'm tuning it. Basically, there's a real-time analog guy. It's like, hey, 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 adjusting it. So we have reached a point where sound tangibly is better now, like in terms of technology, in terms of digital recording. We no longer have to worry about it. But analog to digital converter, that's still magic. That's the only thing I have seen where actually jumping to optical technology may be desirable. In MRI machines, they have optical microphones. So it can be done. It's just that super duper, hyper, idiotically expensive. But it does have that quality. Like it's inherently interference free, inherently does not require magic. So all of these equipments are super dedicated and they always have great headphone output. You need that output because whenever you're dealing with boom operator, they are always listening to it. And many times you may find they are not very aware of what's going around. So the reason for that is they're focused on their ears and they're using the headphone output to calibrate. It's like, okay, okay, I think the angles. There's always micro corrections they are doing. Not too much. Of course, it will sound bad if they did that. But there's always gentle correction. It's like, because there is a sweet spot. There's a sweet spot. So they always try to make sure the mic is where the good sound is. So they always try to do that. That requires them headphone output with minimal to zero latency. It is a very critical thing. These equipments have a lot of effort put into their headphone output, more than you, than you will realize. Like it's a genuinely, uh, you know, high level requirement. The must have almost zero latency uh, audio output. And the audio has to match what it's recorded, not just like, okay, I'm sending you the signal. No, how the recorder is recording, that signal has to be sent to the audio. Thankfully, we have learned it. We, have re we are really good with audio. Even back in the tape stay, we are really good with audio. Then we come to most super pro levels, generally have, uh, uh, you know, what we call redundant recording, meaning many of them have SSDs inside and you can put SD card for redundant recording. So 
it's, it's not a big deal, especially for this low bitrate equipment. Yes, 32 bit is a low bitrate compared to 4K recording. So yeah, it's uh, super easy. So this was my presentation on Boom Operator. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.